Hi, everyone. This is Greg Prickrell. I am one of the co-founders of Career.PM. Today, we will be talking to Philip Hubertus about his transition from being an individual contributor to being a product leader, in my opinion. Uh, he's a great product leader. I've known him for a while. I've known the people that have been on his team. Uh, I've worked and coached some of them. I've had them in class, so I feel I can say with some authority. He is a really good product leader. Um, Philip, I think we will just jump right in. And I'm wondering if you could share this transition, if, you know, from being an individual contributor to all of a sudden having, you know, kind of a formal leadership role, having people report to you. Uh, can you tell us about that happen, how that happened for you? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, First of all, I would like to say that uh, as a product manager, you usually don't lead larger teams unless you work in a company that has uh, a sizable product management organization that's also um, set up as a, as a team, as a group within the organization. The, uh, at Here Technologies, we uh, used to have that, but we also used to have product managers embedded with engineering teams mm. and then usually you don't manage engineers formally as a manager mm -hmm. um, but whenever i had the opportunity to lead teams it was actually happening a bit out of coincidence mm -hmm. <laughs> so they were looking for someone to um, lead the team and lead a product and focus on the commercial success and on making business decisions um, that essentially then translate into development, execution, or operational maintenance. Um, that's a tricky thing if you are, you know, because you, you'll work with people that uh, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a technical or on a formal level, uh, they're smarter than you. They, they know how to build stuff, they know how to operate stuff, and you don't necessarily do that. Mm -hmm. uh, but what you bring in is, you bring in the perspective from the market, from the customer side, uh, and if you communicate that a lot, it provides people with the guidance uh, to make the right decisions. And I mm -hmm. think that's key uh, for any leadership role, um, that you help uh, provide that, those guiding principles. Um, mm -hmm. And one of them, if you are building a product or when you, when you want to lead a team that builds product is that um, you need to keep a long-term view, uh, a commercial view, and you need to manage your products along the life cycle. That's really important. Yeah. Uh, when you actually started leading people, when you had a team that was reporting to you, can you remember, you know, was there something about that that was unexpected or was a surprise? Was there an expectation they had, or was there just yeah. um, something in that role that you hadn't expected? Yeah, so this can be a lot of fun if you have people that, uh, that enjoy working with you, that are confident in their role, uh, that are open to talk about uh, their challenges and what they propose as solutions or uh, accept uh, your advice or your ideas or uh, your suggestions, but it can also be very challenging if you have people that um, that are very confident of themselves, but not necessarily necessarily showing the performance to mm -hmm. uh, to really underpin that um, and it can be super hard and tricky, at least it was for me to, to manage these people and tell them or, or you know, not, how do I best say this? I mean, it's, it's like you need to have a conversation about um, your expectations and how you can help them, but uh, as a, as a product leader or as a team leader, there is a certain boundary that you cannot cross. I mean, at the end of the day, they need to deliver mm -hmm. uh, on your expectations 
regarding their role, uh, you cannot do it for them. And at a certain stage uh, in their career, you cannot tell them how to do every single thing. Sure. My, my personal way of doing things, I, I want to give people the, the freedom and, and chuck out the playing field and say, there you go. Mm -hmm. But then they need to start running by themselves. I don't want to tell them, you know, now paste this down in, in one minute. Sure. Try me to be 50 centimeters or something. You know? So kind of dealing with people who have maybe an inflated sense of their contribution or what they're doing. I can imagine that's even more challenging. Like most people who have managed to have, have had somebody who's underperforming, but if that same person also thinks they're doing great and that they're super capable, yeah, I can see how that can be a very um, tricky situation. Um, I think you were talking about the perspective you need to have as a leader. And one of the questions uh, that you know I hear a lot is, you know, how do you balance maintaining this big picture, which is clearly your responsibility as a leader, with all these details that are constantly, you know, popping up, uh, demanding some of your attention? How do you go about finding the right balance in terms of your energy between this big, broad view and then mm -hmm. making sure that things are done right, you know, with this detailed level? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it can be it can be very easy and tempting to get sucked into the funnel of creating these outputs rather than outcomes. So that's a, that's a thing that I actually like to talk about quite a bit. Mm -hmm. and outputs for me are achievements uh, on the back of activities. Right. So you do something, it creates some sort of an output, and you can look at it in some way. And my experience is that organizations and leadership can focus on measuring people's performance based on outputs. But for product management, I really recommend focusing on outcomes. An mm -hmm. Outcome is something that you measure by looking at the impact and value of, of an achievement. Mm -hmm. So to keep a broad picture, you have to step back regularly and assess your outputs as a team, and then when necessary, make adjustments. You need to reserve time to focus on these and also reserve time to focus on, on, on mm -hmm. just the tactical stuff. And, and quarterly review meetings can be a tool that can help with this. And, but if you're doing it more often, you tend to look at it and measure uh, outputs again instead of outcomes. So, mm -hmm. so uh, makes sense that, you know, there, I guess, in this broader picture and in the details, this kind of unifying concept is, you know, figuring out the impact, looking at either one of those, not so much the, uh, the output, which I guess could be detail oriented, but thinking about the outcomes uh, that they're generating. And that seems like a way that you could uh, tie those two things uh, together. Um, it sounded to me like, and you know, like a lot of people, you kind of fell into a leadership role uh, because there, you know, was a need, uh, you were the right person kind of in the right place, uh, at the right time. Um, have you actually in your career, like pursued a leadership role? Have you, have you seen there, oh, there's this role and worked your way towards that, uh, role or has it always been just kind of, you know, being in the, being the best person for the job? kind of opportunistically? Uh, no, I mean, I've, I've tried to focus on um, what I can bring to the table as a, as a leader or as someone to advance my career. Um, and I've talked to people and tried to open opportunities for myself. Um, sometimes I was quite successful. Uh, sometimes you have to take a step back because the organization changes and mm -hmm. um, with that change uh, you may lose some people from the team or you lose uh, some scope of what you're responsible for. I think that's pretty normal these days, right? Um, mm -hmm. And that, personally, what is what do you feel like was your biggest challenge to move into these leadership roles? What is the yeah. kind of personal development or professional development area that you feel like you have had to work the hardest on? 
Yeah, for me, the, the one of the big challenges challenges really is to to manage people because it can be, as I said earlier, it can be easy, but it can also be very difficult and challenging. Um, I I believe about myself that I'm trying to be very fair and, and helpful, but as I said earlier, it only goes so far, right? So mm-hmm. if you have someone that uh, is too convinced of themselves or someone that is really underperforming, you have to draw the line at some stage where you say, okay, you know, let's talk openly about this. We've reached a stage where I believe I can't help you anymore. Mm-hmm. So what do we do now? I mean, um, and that's a really, really tough discussion. And you can read a lot of books about it, right? But reading a book about managing people is like reading a book about playing the piano, but not having yeah. the possibility to actually play a piano. So sure. <laughs> um, it's something that comes with experience as you manage people. Um, I think I've let people down a couple of times because I wasn't used to the situation. I've tried to make it up in some way, but um, I've also had to give up uh, in two occasions where I've said one time, like, I, sorry, I cannot do this anymore. I don't think we have the level of trust that I can be your manager. So mm-hmm. I've worked with the person to transition to another role in the team, to another manager. And at one time I've had to unfortunately uh, work with someone and uh, moving out of the organization because it wasn't working for us. And it's, it's difficult because it's really sad. As I said earlier, I see the potential uh, in people. I love to see the potential in people, but um, if you can't help them. Sure. So I take from that, I think a lot of people are attracted to leadership positions because they will have maybe a little more autonomy, have some decision-making power. As product people, we think about, you know, setting the vision and driving the team toward it. But there can easily be some very messy people management stuff that makes the job harder than it might seem. Yeah, and, and you have to acknowledge that your work just as a part in a whole organization for people and groups, right? So uh, product leadership uh, gets messy uh, or interesting uh, when you, and you always have to work with uh, other groups on something and Mm -hmm. fight for priorities and budget and uh, Mm -hmm. stuff's communicated, presented to customers and all sorts of things. And it can be a wild ride, but yeah, it's, it can be a lot of fun as well. Yeah, I wonder, you know, the great thing about being an individual contributor is that there usually is this shorter term, more definable kind of end, but this like success, like you get to do something and sometimes it's more straightforward. Do you miss sometimes being an individual contributor? And are there things that you do every once in a while to just kind of get your fix, you know, of this like short term gratification for doing something? Yeah. Yeah, I think um, in today's world, um, as, a, as a leader or manager, you, you still do some individual contributor work as well and mm-hmm. see the need and you're not stepping onto the toes of the person who is actually in charge, um, then I think that's fine. But you, you have to be aware of the, where the, the line is. Right? Mm-hmm. And what helps in my uh, view is to be very open uh, and communicate when you take on tasks. Um, sometimes there are peak loads, uh, p- uh, peaks in, in workloads and you jump mm-hmm. in but mm-hmm. the responsibility should really remain uh, with the person on the team. And, and that's the tricky thing. And you yeah. have to understand that as a leader, you can be intimidating and very quickly discourage people from holding on to their responsibility, right? Mm-hmm. Because yeah, they think, oh, now that my manager jumped into this year, uh, he's going to take it. Um, yeah. and, and there's a really good book that I read uh, just recently 
about uh, on this topic, and it's uh, written by the U.S. Navy Captain David Marquette. It's called "Turn the Ship Around," and it's about ownership and responsibility. And hmm. I find that very interesting. And yeah, great and reference you, for you people. If you need that fix, you know, then my my personal advice is maybe find a hobby. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I. <laughs> I ride bicycles and I occasionally run a small pop-up bicycle service on, on the weekend day where I fix my friends and neighbors bikes and that gives mm -hmm. me that instant sense of achievement and I, yeah. I look at pride at the donations that I collect for the World Bicycle Relief Fund at the end of such a day. So that. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard an interesting concept lately. We talk about leadership, but uh, this person was talking about followership. So, you know, you have to, it takes effort to be a great leader and it takes some effort to be a great follower. And when you think about, you know, the people on your team, is there one characteristic really that you look for that, you know, what is it that they can do? What is one thing you can think of that they can do that helps you lead more effectively? Yeah, for me, this is really about uh, taking on the responsibility and running with it and communicating about it and seeking advice. Um, mm -hmm. Communicating about it, I mean, you know, check in if you keep people informed, you know, about what you're doing and what mm -hmm. you're planning on doing. Um, it's actually something that I read in this book that I found so telling where um, this guy turned the whole uh, command system around and he let people decide what they want to do and basically not ask for permission but just make the statement I'm going to do this now mm -hmm. and if the captain then says no hold on or why are you doing this then either you have not provided enough information on why you think this is a good idea um, or maybe you know that wasn't such a great idea mm -hmm. so if you are an individual contributor um, then try and act like a leader be a leader for your product mm -hmm. um, and check in with with the people that uh, need to are also responsible in in the organizational uh, mm -hmm. chain of command, uh, but yeah. So act. take accountability. Yeah. Communicate and ask for, you know, help. Uh, yeah. For yeah, for uh, yeah, for, for things that are appropriate for somebody with more experience, maybe to yeah. to help you with. Not be and, and sometimes it's just a second pair of eyes to review something, uh, and sometimes you're stuck, and that's okay. I mean. Mm -hmm. We're all just humans. We all uh, we're all stuck sometimes. So I ask people on my team for advice um, because I value their experience. Um, uh, and so I also ask people up the chain for advice sometimes. Also across mm -hmm. the organization, you know, sometimes the it's not your immediate manager who may be a good sounding board. It's people uh, across the organization. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Uh, one last question, Philip. Um, if you could go back to and talk to yourself, you know, as somebody who was an individual contributor, maybe getting close to making the transition into leadership, what advice would you give yourself as you took that step towards a more, you know, really formal leadership role? Uh, yeah. I think you cannot be... Uh courageous enough and you cannot communicate enough mm -hmm. um, with courage i mean really being uh decisive or make decisions um and uh, communicate openly provide open feedback like this is something that i think is great this is something i didn't like because and uh, but allow enough room to let people respond without them feeling intimidated, right? Like, mm -hmm. so maybe this courage has something to do with this, you know, kind of getting outside of your comfort zone, yeah, yeah. take some risks. Yeah. Uh, that's how we all grow. 
And then, yeah, you're, it's very unlikely that you are going to really over communicate, right? Mm -hmm. Openly share what you're thinking, what you're doing. Uh, yeah, people tell you to shut up, or, or they will ignore your emails. But um, yeah, there is really no such thing as not uh, as over communicating. Um, yeah, what we do internally is, and what I try and do with my team is, uh, we try and really uh, have uh, content and, and information about our stuff on Confluence, uh, on Open SharePoints, where everybody can read stuff. Because mm -hmm. once you've written things down about how your product works and acts and, and um, what it is, you can point people to it and you don't have to rewrite things all the time. So mm -hmm. we collect the information that we create, the, the specifications, the documents, the, the problem statements, everything that we work on, uh, and we try and make that uh, available to anyone. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Philip. Thank you so much for your time. I think that's great insight. Really for everybody, all product managers to some extent are in a leadership role. I know this will be really valuable for people who are you know, looking to take that next step into you know, a formal leadership role. So thanks again. Thanks, Greg. It's, you know, this is one of the opportunities that's also good for myself because it helps me reflect on some of the things. And um, yeah. Yeah, good. Great. Thanks. Thanks so much. All righty then. That wasn't, that, was, that wasn't too painful. And yeah, I think uh, great stuff came out of there. I don't think we need to do much editing. I'm not sure when I'm going to get to this. I'm going to try to get to it in the next week or two, like kind of piece this up into, you know, something that's presentable. Um, and yeah, really good stuff. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, we'll uh, talk uh, when we talk. I'm hoping things kind of normalize. I was thinking about reaching out to Toby and just trying to figure out what's going on at here these days. Yeah. But I guess it sounds, I don't know, are things kind of picking up or is, has any hiring restarted or what's going on? Yeah, we're doing, we have some uh, jobs open again. Um, but everything is very focused on, um, on areas or industries that we believe are growth areas. Mm -hmm. um, Toby is doing a lot of, not a lot of, but like a weekly session where he invites people uh, into uh, like 45 minute sessions.